talking with Dr. Griffin Rogers of NIDDK. Dr. Rogers, if obesity is a public health problem, what is government research uh, doing right now to fix it? Well, I think government research is focusing on uh, several topics. It's focusing on the basic understanding of how fat is associated with the number of complications, diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, cancers. It's focusing on uh, better uh, prevention and treatment strategies uh, to reduce uh, the effects of obesity, uh, such as lifestyle changes, as well as medications, or in extreme examples, bariatric surgery, and how those interventions reduce the complication rates. It's also focusing on an area that I didn't have a chance to elaborate in my, in my talk, and that is changing the, the built environment. Certain areas, the default value actually causes one to choose lifestyle changes, sedentary lifestyle, for example. Food choices that have you know, higher calorie but less nutritional value. And so how one can change the, the, the environment in such a way that one begins to nudge people uh, into a healthier lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And what does research tell us about what time to eat? Well, uh, I presented some intriguing uh, information we've learned about uh, studies in, in animal models in which, for example, if uh, they're allowed to eat for 24 hours, eat continuously, interestingly, even the same amount of calories that are taken in, if you can restrict that to a nine-hour period in which there is also associated physical activity, you actually uh, can maintain weight and uh, remain fit. Now, these are studies in animal models, and you know it's too early to extrapolate these to humans, but we already have some idea that eating uh, um, independent or, or over extended periods of time, 24 hours at libidum, is associated with a greater risk of, of, uh, of excessive weight and the inability to lose a weight. Take, for example, shift workers, people that work the graveyard shift. Uh, they have a higher uh, uh, prevalence of obesity, and once they even attempt weight loss, it's uh, often met with frustration. Mm -hmm. And what does research tell us about fat versus carbs? Well, um, at least in a, in a, again, a small study uh, that we performed in a research environment uh, at the NIH uh, in which people were given uh, a restriction in their diets, either 30% uh, restriction either solely on the basis of fat restriction or solely on the basis of carbohydrate restriction. While both groups lost weight and lost fat, uh, it turns out that the individuals who are restricted in, in fat actually burn more fat in comparison to what they were taking in, and so they lost a greater amount of weight, and specifically they lost a, a greater amount of uh, the composition of fat uh, when measured uh, in, um, uh, in certain uh, so-called bod pod. It's a way to actually determine your body composition. Mm -hmm. uh, again, short-term study in a research environment and it's hard to make a lot that has to be rep, uh, replicated by others, uh, but it certainly does point out that what you eat is also important. Uh, for the long term, however, probably better to get on an eating plan that you're likely to stick with mm -hmm. than to being so restrictive uh, for particular types of uh, uh, meals. Mm -hmm. uh, last question, what are the best ways to reduce childhood obesity? Well, the reduction of childhood obesity really does literally take a village. It does take uh, the concern not only of, of, of medical uh, staff uh, to make certain that they have these conversations with uh, parents and other healthcare providers uh, at the regular visits. It takes the uh, obviously the parents and, and, and extended family. Uh, to make sure that the kids aren't sitting in front of a computer or in, in front of a, a video game or always on to actually become a little bit more active. It takes uh, people at the schools to make sure that physical education is still very important. That's one of the things that tends to be cut when the school budgets uh, get reduced. Uh, and it takes 
some uh, individual, you know, as a child gets older and can make their own decision, it takes some, some obvious some input from those individuals. In that regard, the, the increasing use of these fitness trackers, for example, mm -hmm. which sort of gives you feedback and can provide instant motivation in terms of uh, reaching certain limits, uh, we find is uh, very fascinating. But this whole idea of sort of the behavioral changes associated is a, a not as a, is an area that's been somewhat neglected. And so the science of behavior change is something that we and other institutes are actively working on. Thank you, Dr. Rogers. Thank you so much.